lecture about speculative design is meant to inspire you to think about the future, to think about the things that you can improve in this world. And uh, let me start with a fact uh, that dawned on me pretty recently, that whatever you are doing, you are still working for the future. You cannot, uh, you cannot avoid it. Uh, you can be coming from different uh, ways of life, you can be doing dif different things. Uh, not specifically design, uh, not specifically arts, uh, some things like that. Uh, but the things that you are doing will be an example for someone who comes after you. Uh, they will make the status quo of the next generation. This is what these people will be starting from. So I am urging you to think about the future now and think what kind of example we are setting, setting for the people that are coming after us. And uh, speculative design uh, is a field of uh, design that uh, helps you uh, on this way. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move on to choosing our future. I should say that nowadays we're actually choosing our future uh, because these three prerequisites that you can see on screen make it possible. Uh, we're not there to just follow any, uh, any standards or any guidelines that uh, other people are setting for us. There is a global industry and global market well developed, so we have uh, a possibility to transport technology everywhere in the world. We have a possibility to transport goods, materials and everything that is needed for your creation. Uh, it's a unique point in time uh, where we have all that and it allows us uh, to create our own future. Also, we have a global informational web, so we have the internet, everyone, uh, well, probably not everyone is striving for that, but a lot of people on the earth are actually connected through this global network, and that means that there is a free flow of technology. That means that you can share ideas and you can find collaboration with the people from all around the world. You can find sponsors from all around the world for whatever, uh, progressive ideas you have. If you try hard enough, you will get it. And what is also super important is that nowadays uh, humanity operates uh, with science. We are less relying on ideologies in contemporary world uh, than on scientific ways. I hope so. At least Darmstadt uh, gives me uh, this kind of feeling. So, uh, freedom of ideation. This is a super important part uh, that allows us to freely uh, imagine the future that we would like to have. Uh, but you may ask, why should we actually think about the future? Why shouldn't we just live with uh, whatever we have nowadays? And I would say, first, because it's smart. <laughs> it's good to think in advance about the challenges that are facing uh, uh, the humanity and you as a part of humanity tomorrow. Uh, today uh, we are aware of the global crisis uh, that humans can provoke with the industry and with uh, human activity in general. The food crisis, the overpopulation crisis, we need to tackle these things uh, to survive on this planet and to thrive. And uh, this leads us to the second point. We need to consider the long-term effect of our actions. We can be uh, prospering nowadays with the, with the things that we already have, but uh, what kind of uh, effect it gives us for the future? Maybe we are using up our resources today and tomorrow we won't be having anything uh, to sustain this path of development. So we have to think in advance of the, our strategy for the future, where it actually brings us, what kind of things we will have on our hands, uh, what will be the mentality of the future people. And uh, this is basically the third point, uh, which is super important, I think, to realize is that our values uh, should not be related to something um, uh, promoted by any ideology. Because ideology is there uh, to gather the votes, so to speak, to gather people uh, for uh, the intentions of other people. But uh, if we want to um, adjust our behavior to fit our long-term goals, we have to adjust the things that we believe in. We have to uh, understand why 
it is important uh, to think about the environment, why it is important to uh, reflect on the future of democracy, why it is important uh, to move forward and not uh, stagnate in one place, why, why we are changing and how we can be changing uh, in a positive way. So uh, the question, uh, the main question of speculative design is what if? It's a question that brings you to the realm of the future, that uh, allows you to make uh, assumptions about how this world will look like, or may look like, tomorrow. And speculative design, if we put it very simply, is a field uh, of uh, human activity that uh, mixes together design, art, technology, and science. And uh, it operates on the uh, question, what if? What if tomorrow people will develop in a new species? Tomorrow, I mean a hundred years from now, or like 200 years from now. What if we create the technology that allows us to um, upload our minds on a USB drive? Do you want to go to the meta space that is promoted by the meta corporation? Do you actually want to become a, a certain type of a robot? Some people would argue with that. Some people would say that you need to live uh, in peace with uh, other people and with nature. And that's fair. So uh, the realm of speculative design is the realm of making assumptions and showing people how this world of tomorrow may look like. And uh, I will show you an example, a wonderful project from uh, the authors of the term speculative design, uh, Anthony Dunn and Fiona Rabi. Uh, the designers from Great Britain. Uh, this project is called United Micro Kingdoms, and this project um, uh, this project uh, maps out the uh, future of the British Isles in terms of governance and uh, shows it on the example of transportation systems. So here you can see the, uh, this map of uh, United Micro Kingdoms uh, in different patterns. Uh, on the map, and here you can see their technology. So this uh, designer bureau uh, thought about the ways um, our society can adapt to the uh, overpopulation crisis. And they spread their solutions on this uh, mimetic uh, chart that you are very well familiar with, I think. Uh, that goes from authoritarian to libertarian, left to right. And they mapped out four different possibilities for the future of the British Isles. Let's go from the left authoritarian side. Uh, for no reason. There is no reason, reason in this sequence. This is a co com communa nuclearist commune. This is a nuclear train. As you see, there's uh, a little... Uh, a little set of hills over here, and that's actually a nuclear-powered train that's dashing through the vast green fields of Great Britain. Never stops, because otherwise someone can identify where it is and this train can be destroyed. And this train is super valuable, because all the population of the state lives inside this train. This train has everything that you might want. This train has nightclubs. This train has galleries, places for creation, recreation, gyms, educational centers, workplaces, and all of that. But there is one thing missing. You, ca you cannot reproduce as much as you like. There is one in and one out policy. I beg free reproduction uh, for the sake of the well-being of the country, and people enjoy Wonderful views as they go through this uh, through this country eternally. One in, one out. One person is born. One person is dead. That's how they keep the population, and this is how they uh, keep uh, the sustainability of this uh, of this uh, of this community. Then we go on the right side of the authoritarian axis, and this cute little cars uh, is our most probable future unless we actually do something and unless we reflect on how we can develop our civilization to uh, adjust to this crisis because 
the Digitarian Society. The Digitarian Society largely likes to live in a dream, in a dream uh, that everything is all right. Everything will be progressing as it should be if we properly cal calculate everything. So this uh, society is ruled by technocrats and neural networks uh, who manage uh, every move of the people. There is no such thing as privacy, I'm afraid. It's super valuable for the German society, as far as I understood over here. Uh, so in that ca in that type of future, it is impossible because everything is control is controlled by the algorithms. And these tiny little cars may look cute, but in fact, for the sake of uh, this kind of transportation and management, the whole country in is. Uh, remade into a massive tarmac. It's remade into a sort of a parking lot, which allows uh, easy transportation on this personal or two personal cars uh, around the country. Uh, their routes are meticulously ca calculated by, by the algorithms. Um, you're saving up on everything, but there, there is no, not much freedom in the sense that we understand it right now. All right, let's go see what we have on the libertarian side. Maybe there's going to be something f more free. I hope so. So on the left libertarian uh, quarter, we have this ugly potato over here. It's my personal view on this potato, so you, whatever you judge. This uh, is a community of bioliberals. Uh, they uh, prefer to stay on the nat natural side and uh, collaborate with with the nature and their means of transportation uh, is biofuel powered so inside this tank over here uh, there is bacteria that uh, m makes enough energy within the within this uh, potato structure for moving the wheels but you have to sacrifice something if you're going for uh, the sustainable society you are losing uh, speed of society and social transportation that we have now. So they're moving very slowly but steadily. And they, uh, this is a bargain that uh, they had to go for uh, to save the, their community from the fossil fuels that we don't like that much nowadays. All right, the last, the last one I should admit is my favorite society because of this tiny little uh, animals, uh, a fat horse, how I call it, and a fat doggo. Uh, this is an, an anarcho-evolutionist society that prefers uh, to never tell people what they should do. They are free to do whatever. They're doing biohacking technologies. They uh, rejoice in improving their bodies through these methods and evolving into essentially different species of people. This uh, Humanoids uh, evolved from the humans of today. Uh, as you can see, some people get, are getting more sturdy, some people are getting leaner and, uh, and taller, because they have different tasks in the society. Everyone is useful. Everyone in this society uh, performs some social role, uh, and the body reflects this kind of role. The, the weird vehicle that you can see over here, marked uh, with dark red, is a bicycle of anarcho-evolutionists. As you can see, it's, it's pretty hard to see it over there, but half of the seats are riding seats, so they have pedals, and the other half of the seats don't have uh, any, pedal, uh, any pedals, and therefore the passengers, because not everyone in the society is sturdy enough uh, to propel this bicycle, and uh, some elderly people and the children uh, taking, uh, uh, occupying the passenger seats, but they also have a role. They sing songs and tell stories to the people who are cycling. This type of future I like very much just because of this uh, bicycle. Uh, I, I, I think, I think uh, we have to reflect on this opportunity and probably introduce this kind of vehicles uh, in our cities regardless of our path of development. But what I want to draw your attention to is that uh, this uh, project has provided us different uh, props for thinking about how our society can develop. It's simple things that are made as uh, exhibits 
for a museum exhibition, which are meant to propel your imagination, which are pro uh, meant to inspire social debate about how we are developing. And uh, the next uh, project on sustainability, also from Don and Rabbi, one of my favorites, uh, works specifically on the same matter. We are running out of food. Or uh, we have to adapt to the new ways of production of food. We're going green. We are rejecting some farming methods. We cannot occupy the whole of Earth with our farms to sustain ourselves as we, as we are right now. So probably one of the solutions would be to eat things that you wouldn't consider food right now. Plastic, or uh, fuel, or uh, stone, or solar energy. There's a lot of opportunities that we don't consider right now because our body is not adapted to uh, consuming this kind of nutrients, but it could be. So what you see over here, these uh, green devices attached to the people and attached to the people, people's insides, is a, a future method of feeding, a potential method of feeding ourselves. Uh, it creates a gatherer society where uh, every person has digestive bacteria and they live in kind of a symbiosis with, with this bacteria uh, to rework the things uh, that uh, we consider pollution right now. Maybe, maybe plastic like uh, plastic feeding bacteria, why not? We just need energy, essentially. So uh, you could be f uh, feeding as filter feeders, uh, as whales, that could be our potential evolution. You could be gatherers, and you can be ga gathering twigs in the forest and eat them. It's all a matter of debate, and it's all a matter of our creation. So looking at, the, looking at this, kind of projects, people can uh, work in this direction scientifically. So as long as we have a sort of a um, speculative solution for the problem, we can actually develop the technology that brings us closer to this solution, and to this kind of reality. And this is speculative design. But uh, yeah, speculative design goes from problem solving, the, uh, providing the solutions for the problems that we have nowadays, for the things that we actually want, we actually require with the status quo that we have nowadays. It goes to the realm of problem setting. So it goes further to the problems that are not yet there. But we, as I said, we have to be prepared for the future because when these problems actually uh, come to our reality, it may be a little bit too late to work uh, on the solutions. So to avoid that, we need the solutions of speculative design. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, reasons for free speculation, I would say. Uh, there is some uh, practicality in various types of uh, possibilities uh, that speculative design uh, unfolds. For example, dystop dystopias, uh, I think uh, many of you might have seen uh, the Black Mirror, the Black Mirror over there, the terrible futures that I would probably not want to live in. The dystopias uh, help us to figure out what kind of future we don't want. Like what is, what is there that uh, is probably gonna be terrible? What, what kind of technology can go out of hand? So before it actually goes out of hand, we can form solutions to prepare ourselves for that. And I think this is one of the uh, most um, important parts of speculation, of speculation for us today, because most of these futures from, uh, that, uh, that Netflix uh, suggested to us are awful. There is no, fr there is no freedom. There is people, people who are uploading themselves in the metaverse and they're helpless. They're totally controlled by the repressive government and uh, by the repressive society, and they have no option over there. But can we make this, this kind of futures more democratic? It's up to you. That's up to you to think 
of how we can find a way out of that. So the next, the next thing is uh, designing for things that can potentially happen. And this is, mm, uh, this is a more positive side of that. So we don't really need to, to, to see uh, some real problem out there. We need, we need to uh, think freely of what opportunities unfold in front of us. Because nowadays we understand much more about our bodies and our mentality uh, from the scientific perspective, we're kind of like a biological robots that are operated by chemistry, uh, chemistry flows, and or we uh, are also a part of evolution. So we want, uh, we don't want to stay in place. I would say, and uh, it's interesting, and I think very insightful to think uh, what kind of opportunities unfold in front of us. Uh, because we understand ourselves this way. Do you want to develop in a new species? Why not? There, there can be a lot of improvements to the human body that you, we can implement and that would be actually beneficial for us. We, we could work uh, on ways to uh, produce uh, useful nutrients inside of our body. The things that we probably lost, like at some, uh, at some point in history we were able to produce vitamin C inside of our bodies and now we cannot. What a shame. So this could be a possible way of development. Let's think about it. Uh, the last and very, uh, that, that, that's my, my favorite point, is that these projects are actually just poetic. They bring inspiration, and this is what I'm trying to do right now, is to inspire you guys to think about the future and think uh, what kind of things you would like to see, what kind of things you would like to make reality. The essential question for that is how to make it, how to make this kind of speculative design projects. Pretty easy, pretty easy. Just start with a dream. Start with something that you would like to improve. Start with some problem or some something that you would like to change in this world. And be brave. Start with uh, something that actually touches you. And imagine a, sort of a fantastic solution to that. That uh, works, but on a science fiction level, not on fantasy level. Because there's, there's a massive difference between science fiction in fantasy and the fact that magic that is a realm of fantasy does not require any explanation. It's the moment when you say, all right, it just works. It just works somehow and I have no idea why and what, what, what's the point of it. So think of this kind of practically. And after that, imagine a world around the solution that you propose. Imagine how people will be using it. What kind of people uh, this solution creates? What kind of mentality comes about because of this solution? How it reforms the structures of power? How it reforms the management of people? How it reforms the transfer of information in the world? So be creative. Be, uh, be the one who creates your, your own fantasy world. And then go Go practical. This is a super important mind map chart created uh, in the 70s, uh, which essentially shows a technology or uh, some event in the center. And on the inner circle, you see the immediate, uh, the immediate consequences of this technology. On the wider circle, you have the consequences of the consequences, and you can expand on that. But um, let me show you uh, how it actually works on a very simple example. If you have a wheel as a, as a human technology, super ancient and very useful. If you put it in the center, uh, then you can go to the printing station, which essentially ev evolves uh, from the technology of the wheel. And the printing, sta uh, the printing station, apart from, creating, uh, from making our uh, overwhelming literacy possible and uh, reforming the transfer of information around the world. It also gives rise uh, to such thing as just a printer. You attach electricity to that and you make a printer. But then the idea of a printer brings you to the 3D printer because you go from 2D space to a 3D space and with each leap you add another technology or uh, another event uh, to what uh, you have in one of these circles. 
And this is how you move from the idea of printing out things to printing out organs, which is a completely um, pos possible, which is completely possible nowadays. And uh, thank God, people are actually thinking about that. So hopefully, at some point, uh, the capsules from uh, the star troopers that fix you up, whatever happens to you, will be possible. I really hope for that. That will be super useful for me, reckless person. And then we cannot go, we cannot go anywhere uh, nowadays with the discussion of speculative design without without the future code. It's an um, interesting tool with which people usually start the discussion of speculative design, but I would use it uh, to inspire your imagination once again. Uh, it's very simple. It's used for um, adjusting the strategies of uh, different companies on the market and uh, for general ideation. Uh, in, in the center, you have our possible reality, the things that are likely to be, uh, according to the estimates, the things that can actually happen in the next few years. Outside of this cone, you have things that might be, and this is, in fact, a concern of massive corporations uh, that are working on a strategy that can be sustainable uh, with massive risks uh, of massive uh, shifts in the technology, uh, politics, um, the human organization, global crisis. Some global crisis will not shatter uh, the basis of your company if you think in this realm. And in fact, I think this realm uh, can be very productive. Uh, we won't be showing this video over here, but I urge you to investigate the video uh, from Apple from, uh, from the 80s, where they uh, try to foresee the future uh, of technology. And all the technologies that they actually showed uh, in the 80s, they never existed at this point, but they started to exist uh, 30 years after. So it's a very productive field of ideation that comes over here. From the things that they actually could foresee in this video were uh, tablets, they were the internet, uh, voice ass assistants uh, like Siri or Cartana and Alexa, all of that. These things were the things that could, might be, and they actually took place. Uh, but outside of that, to expand your imagination even more, there is a field of things that we can technically imagine. And there is a way to uh, think about it. Everything is possible, which is not forbidden by the laws of physics. Let's say it like that. And just one thing to inspire, uh, uh, just one way to uh, inspire your bravery uh, about ideation is that uh, according to Einstein's equations, uh, time travel could be possible. So it lies somewhere over there among the things that could be technically possible, but I would still urge you uh, to think a little bit more practical. And here are some real uh, things for your inspiration. Speculative design operates largely uh, with uh, props or with some prototypes of, of this future. And here is what Yamaha uh, company proposes uh, for the for its future. It's kind of it's kind of a trumpet uh, com uh, combined with a, a vehicle. Uh, wouldn't call it a motorbike, but it's a vehicle. So that that could be a future. Uh, that, that could be a future of music making. Why not? This one is much more useful uh, for ideation, I would say. Uh, created around uh, 12, 15 years ago, uh, new central and interfaces, a project that tries to imagine how these um, nano robots that will, could, could be replacing our contemporary computers uh, can look in reality. We can speculate about uh, how, it, uh, how it, uh, this technology can look like, but how will an actual consumer operate it? Probably this way, like a, uh, like a pack of seeds, uh, which transform into whatever you want, want it to transform into. Also, I'm leaving some links over here and below our video will have 
uh, the um, presentation and the links to all of these projects. So I urge you uh, to investigate them. Most of them are supplied with uh, interesting videos uh, that uh, show uh, that show the concept. It's a very very practical thing, but could be our future of transportation. Or maybe this is the future of transportation. Do you want to write in a matchbox like a frog from a fairy tale? where you enclose yourself uh, in this car and then you open it up and it becomes a couch. Why not? Mm. Can you imagine living in this kind of, uh, in this kind of buildings? Yeah. This is for you architects over here. Uh, the crazy ideas of how to build things, uh, taking into consideration our new insights about the world, our uh, green understand understanding of our life. Or maybe we have to uh, let uh, artificial intelligence generate our, ho our homes. And this is how they may look like. This is the solutions that they come up with. This uh, stuff uh, is actually a project that um, I personally would like to see in practice. It was designed uh, for a New Delhi. And these sci-fi towers that you see in a massive chain uh, nothing dystopian, they're actually cleaning the air. This is the towers that cover the whole spa space of a massive city and clear it from the dust, from, from the pollution and everything. Looks like a future what, uh, that I would like to see in practice. So, designing your, designing your speculations. Keep your feet on the ground. Be a proper designer. This is how. This is the designer circle that, that is um, very practical, very simple, and very widespread. So we've talked basically about this side of the circle. First, you define the problem. You imagine, uh, you, you, you try to think of what is wrong in this world. What do you want to improve? Then you collect information about that. You go on the internet. You go, but not only on the internet. Please consult a specialist as well. It's super insightful. Make some interviews. It's interesting uh, to investigate uh, what ac the actual people uh, in the industry think about the solution of this problem. This will give you a lot of um, insights, a lot of, uh, a lot of technolo technology that you could not probably think about by yourself uh, in a simple way because uh, people are friendly. Ask them. Then Go to your friends and uh, ideate with them, brainstorm and try to analyze it. Just gather up, gather up a community of fellow thinkers, get yourself some tea or coffee. Coffee probably works for inspiring your energy. Uh, so think, think with them, try to uh, make your idea, uh, ideas float freely and uh, come up with solutions that, that can, uh, can be different. Go uh, first, uh, expand, expand these solutions, try to make a lot of solutions, and then converge in one thing that you can actually make and prototype it. So this is a very important step, and technically the process of uh, speculative design can end over here, because uh, we should admit, a lot of these uh, projects actually uh, end up as museum exhibits, and they could be ending up over here. But what could be more interesting, if you actually have a dream, if you actually want to make this world a better place, don't stop over there. Make one, one piece that shows you one way to create this reality. Get feedback from the people who are looking at that and improve your design. And then make another piece that works on the same problem, provides solutions for this problem. And that, this way, you will have two. Then, if you keep iterating, this uh, on this circle, you will just have a wonderful exhibition that shows different ways your problem can be solved, and this is super valuable because people can choose uh, one of this, one of these ideas, and make it reality. It's always better to make more. So I would uh, go from the question, uh, "What if?" proposed by Dan and Rabbi. I would go to the question, "Why not?" Why not? actually go and do something that makes this world a better place. Why not? It's easy, interesting, it involves uh, a lot of collaboration with other people, 
and it makes the society, society move. This is how we can overcome our uh, conceptual stagnation. This is just good for the soul, I would say, whatever it is. So let me show you one of, uh, let me show you my favorite projects in this realm. Uh, my parents are doctors, so I cherish this project specifically because it goes in the medical sphere. What you see over here is uh, the lady with her dog uh, and the man with his cute, li cute little lamb. Uh, but these animals are helping these people. Uh, this dog uh, is uh, using uh, non-invasive technology to propel the lungs uh, for this lady. So it's a lung ventilator that operates with the, uh, with the power of the dog lungs. And it is actually, in fact, uh, kind of beneficial for this dog as well, uh, as the prerequisite of this project, uh, because uh, this breed of dogs is uh, bred for competitions. So as you know, the uh, life of professional sports people is not, um, it, 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 it's, it's not, it's kind of short. Uh, it ends at some point when your body capacity is over. Uh, these people usually go into advertising or uh, promoting Nike or some other companies uh, or they become uh, actors or whatever. People have opportunities, but these dogs don't. And this could be an opportunity for this kind of dogs to actually help people uh, to live in symbiosis uh, with their, their new hosts and uh, yeah, make something useful. <laughs> so, so the lamp is doing something even more interesting, I would say. Uh, the lamp is uh, engaged in uh, hemodialysis. So uh, this man has a deficiency in his kidneys. Uh, his kidneys are not cleaning his blood properly. And if he didn't have uh, the technology uh, um, when he can be attached to the kidneys of the lamp overnight, who can clean his blood for him. He would have to spend a uh, lot of time every week uh, uh, attached to a very scary and unpleasant machine in a hospital. Terrible, terrible condition, I would say. Uh, it's debatable how uh, welcome this technology is with the lamps, but I think the, one of the very important parts is that this project not only allows us to uh, consider the future of medicine, it actually uh, speaks of the future of our symbiosis with uh, different uh, other species. We collaborate with our gut bacteria anyways, but we just don't acknowledge that. So how can we uh, think about, uh, how can we think differently about uh, co-living with other species? You know, it reminds me of the cartoon made of the man in black that I've seen in my childhood. My favorite, my favorite episode when one of the, the secret agents who works with the aliens uh, has a flu. And he realizes that it's not just a normal flu, it's an interstellar colony of, uh, of an actual uh, beings that are kind of like b bacteria or virus who are now live in his body. So he's not going for any ant antibiotics, which would mean that he will make a, a genocide of this colony inside his body. He uses a device that he puts in his nose and transports them safely into the place where they belong. So they, they eventually send them in space. This is a fun project from Studio B BSK that uh, imagined how can we operate uh, our credit cards or bank cards in the future. This is the technology that we think is kind of like a pillars of the world. Can, how can it change? This is how. Uh, you recognize the whistle, I guess. It's a, it's, it's a kind of a musical instrument that kids use for, for making whistles. And when you whistle, you lose money. So this is a credit card designed uh, to um, dispatch some cash uh, while whistling. And uh, in their videos, they say it would be pretty hard to implement it, in fact, because you don't really estimate how much money you are spending this way. So probably we won't see it in place, but probably we will see this. And this is a bit more practical, I would say. It is a partner, a partner business credit card. As you can see, 
two sides need, need to be put together so two partners of some business can actually pay for, so, uh, pay for something only when they are together. So this is kind of, kind of a team building technology. I love this project because it allows us to rethink something that is here all the time, that's here for some people for all their lives and still it can be changed, it still it can be improved, so it improves, uh, uh, yeah, it uh, inspires us uh, to be brave about the things that we want to change and there's a lot of uh, areas that we can develop in. Here you are, this is my personal, uh, this is my personal list of areas uh, that we can improve and that we can think about uh, nowadays. Uh, in the first place, transhumanism, that's what I was talking about all the time because, I don't know, I would probably like to evolve into some kind of a powerful species, grow some wings, um, uh, get new senses, um, uh, just become stronger, yeah, that, that would be nice. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's an interesting area uh, of thought because once you understand that we're controlled by chemistry, we are uh, the parts of long evolution and whatever the state uh, that our bodies are in uh, right now is probably not optimal. As I said, we lost the ability to produce vitamin C. What? What's that? What's that? I like oranges, but losing such a uh, valuable property is no good. Like, we could, we could retrieve it and we could make a, a lot more out of that. So transhumanism is just objective. Uh, I think uh, the apes uh, that we, uh, are of, uh, like our ancestors, the apes thought it was, uh, it was beautiful and uh, very natural to go nothing. It was, uh, uh, that was how they imagined themselves. This is how they imagined beauty. This is how they imagined the state of, the optimal state of things. But going away from this state of things allowed them to evolve in, into us. And also, the, wherever you go, uh, wherever you go in history of mankind, every time uh, there was uh, some species, this species thought of itself as a stable construction, like the the monkeys uh, that were uh, the ancestors of this knuckle walking ancestors of ours. Could, uh, could say it's very normal to live in the trees. <laughs> it's very normal to jump from one branch to another and uh, collect fruits. Another and uh, collect fruits. And this is how they lost their vitamin C. Oh my God. So I, 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 I urge you to think about it because now today in our society we are actually defying the standards of beauty because everyone is beautiful in their own sense and uh, we are having some genetic mutations naturally all the time so why not accept them why not diverge into different species why are we clenching on the stability of our body so hard it doesn't it does it does it, it's it's not natural it's, it will go at some point maybe in a couple of hundred uh, hundred years maybe in a couple of thousand years or later on we will develop into something else specifically when we go into space do you want to go into space? I want to go into space. I want to visit different uh, other galaxies. Probably, probably I won't survive until this point. And probably we won't see that. But we will have to change. And we have to admit it right now because it's objective. So uh, the things that are much closer to us are neural interfaces. And I've been talking about this already today. The neural interfaces uh, developed now, uh, as you could see from Mr. Musk's uh, monkeys, uh, they are almost on the table. They are almost on the store shelf. So probably within our lifespan, <coughs> we will see the actual working uh, neural chips for, uh, first aiding some people uh, who have disabilities, uh, allowing people to operate mechanical, mechanical arms, uh, mechanical, mechanical limbs uh, and probably even the paralyzed people could be operating uh, a, a mechanical skeleton so this uh, so this neural inter uh, this neural interface idea is already there but just think of what kind of opportunities it opens for us 
if you can in, uh, include a technical device inside your head that um, gets uh, that becomes a part of your neural system, you can realize my dream from the school. You can actually put a USB drive in your head and have all Wikipedia over there. How awesome is that for, for taking tests? I, I think I think it would be gorgeous. But what uh, what it actually means to have all this knowledge inside your head? In terms of speculative design, I would urge you to think practically about that. It blow it blows up your mind when you think about this opportunity. But don't get carried away. Just think of how it will actually feel to live in the world where you have act instant access to all sorts of technology. Do we have the same schools? Do we have the same educational systems? How do we treat uh, artificial intelligence? Because they're essentially like us, or we are on the same page if we get on this level of neural interfaces. How is our, how our conversation with these uh, entities will look like? How uh, the UN or like how our political institutions can develop in order to accommodate uh, the artificial intelligence? Uh, what is the future of agreeing on things if you all have access to the same type of information? Generally, a lot of uh, inconvenience uh, in communicating with people, in my view, in my personal view, uh, comes from the fact that uh, our minds are educated in a different way. I think about this uh, as a sort of a dictionary that we are making for ourselves throughout our lives, uh, attaching some meanings uh, to things like democracy, family, color blue, or sneakers. Uh, I love it, personally. Some people hate it. My mom hates it, to be honest. She, she hates all, all, all the sweet stuff. So uh, these are the things that uh, create various um, inconvenient splits of the society. And that is a thing that will probably go if we have access to the same database, if we have uh, access uh, to the same uh, definitions of things. But would, would we want that? Or prob probably it will take away the tools for ideation, for improving the society. But it, it can make us into one single mind. Do we actually want that? Do we want to uh, maintain some uh, individuality in us? I, I think I do. I think this is what artists are here for, to show us their uh, point of view, their, uh, the way their uh, mind processes this information. And the results of this processing is their art. So think about it, and think about the upload. This is, I, I love this one, because this can make you eternal. You, you don't want to die. I don't, I don't think anyone want, really specifically wants to die too much. Uh, up, uploading yourself uh, in the, uh, through these neural, neural interfaces could be possible. You can be living in an internet space. And there's actually a TV series, I think it's from Netflix, called specifically Upload. So you can look at that and it's um, not the best future you can go for. So you can fi uh, find ways to improve it. You can think of ways people are living in the internet space, uplo uploading themselves over there, uh, could find it interesting, beneficial for them. How they can rework this space from, in from the inside. What kind of tools you can give to the people who are uh, on the same level as uh, artificial intelligences. So think about it. Gender dynamics, uh, I think, uh, is obvious. Because nowadays, the gender dynamics are already super fluid because we don't have to fight so much uh, for our survival in this world. And uh, we have absolutely different ideas of the reproduction. And uh, we're coming from the ideas of Chairman Mao, like make as many people as uh, as possible, because we've seen what it results. The policy of uh, one kid for a family in China after after uh, the Maoist times. So the gender dynamics are developing, but uh, the what is gender and what is uh, family unions altogether in the future? This is an interesting topic, and one of the projects that I will show you, uh, we'll be talking about that. Usually, 
the, the, the things uh, over here are kind of already covered. So whatever you change in the uh, in this area affects the political structures, so the distribution of resources, communication, and generally the evolution of the human species. So uh, this this come uh, in a combination. This project I love dearly. It's super simple and uh, super um, insightful, I would say. It's a, a bunch of uh, photos, there's also some videos uh, and uh, some text that tells you everything that, that is happening in this. Moira, this is Moira, she, deci uh, she decides to renew her 30 year marriage contract with Ted, ensuring they receive better social support and uh, receive benefits from the state. And when she's 82, and she's still young by the standards of the future society because people live, live up to 150 years or even more. She decides to leave Ted and go to another family to become a, uh, a part of a three-generation family where they have a 52-year-old child. It's uh, so simple and it's, uh, it actually poses a question. Would you like to... Uh, would you like contemporary morality and contemporary ideology uh, to confine you in a union uh, with some other person, not, not for uh, uh, 60 years, for 120 years? Would you like, would you like to share uh, the same space and the, kind of the same goals and like, the same life with a person for this, this long time? And what do we think about? Uh, what do you think about uh, the future of families in, in this perspective? It's a good question, I think. This is uh, very close to our reality, I would say. Uh, the project comes from the prerequisite that we can uh, ident we can um, identify humans' uh, emotions, looking at the muscles that they move, and we can make a pattern of uh, uh, the like an emotional map uh, for this uh, for every person and we can understand what kind of emotion is on your face just with an algorithm this can be helpful in ma many times not only in some dystopian futures when the government is controlling how much fun you are having uh, working for this government on some kind of a dystopian farm or a factory no it can actually be helpful for a family uh, which is experiencing some hard times. This device over here uh, is mm, uh, faking. I can say it is just faking the emotions uh, of a spouse on the other side of the table uh, because they are going through some hard times in the family. Uh, but this device allows them uh, to still feel empathy, to still feel united and be together. So it's not that dystopian, I would say. This one is even better. I would prob probably just go for that because uh, this device uh, is a terminal that reads, uh, th that uh, uh, quickly rolls a set of pro products uh, that you can buy from this store and watches your emotions. And your emotions are super quick. Your, your emotions uh, come and go uh, in, a, in, in a glimpse. You don't have to go around all the shelves. You don't need to buy massive amounts of useless stuff. You can just allow the machine to read your emotions and provide you with whatever you need, whatever you actually need, whatever uh, inspires you. Not bad. I think very uh, time-saving. So uh, some of these speculations will become reality very soon. We have just a couple of more of these things, and this uh, project is already becoming reality, which is uh, super um, dear to my heart, I would say. In 2011, the Songs of the Machine project uh, tried to imagine how the blind people could see again with this kind of device, uh, with this kind of device, and what they can actually see. Because uh, retrieving vision to people is just one step. As long as you can operate the uh, things that, that you put in the in your visual nerves, you can augment your seeing. First, of course, you can uh, have an augmented reality, that's what they presuppose, but you can also see the heat, so you can be like a predator from the movies. You can see, uh, see how hot is everyone around you, so to speak. Um, the project went into actual reality very soon after that. 
uh, my dearest Mr. Eagleman uh, made a sens sensory substitution vest that you see over here and presented this project in 2015 already. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty genius and simple. It buzzes in different places. So it takes a sound wave, uh, splits it in, dif in different parts of the sound wave and transposes it uh, all into the sensory feelings on the part of your body that is not, not used for anything else, to be honest. It's just used for hugs. So uh, this vest not only allows people uh, with problems of hearing to hear again, and there's uh, absolutely astonishing video that uh, Eagleman shows uh, where they actually implement this vest, but it also allows you to feed any type of data inside it. Would you like to put this kind of vest uh, on the workers of the nuclear facilities so they can check the uh, radiation level around them? That would be amazing, I think. Nowadays, Europe uh, is facing uh, and the ch challenges uh, on the side of energy, I would say, and people are thinking about the nuclear power once again. So to avoid uh, disasters in this area, this could be very useful. Or you can feed the market data over there and become a super augmented broker and work, uh, and work with the numbers that you actually feel. You, f you can feel the trends of that. Or you can go for more natural things uh, like you can see over here. And uh, it's, not, it's not in vain that these uh, devices kind of uh, give people an animal, animal look because they're uh, developed to provide people some senses that we don't have and the animals do. Uh, these three devices allow people to have echolocation, uh, feeling the magnetic field of the earth and heat vision that I was talking already about. So you become like a snake or like a bat or like a bird. And th this is a nice, uh, I think this is a nice fodder for your uh, imagination as well. Because if you can uh, include echolocation in our senses, how would you map the city? Would you like to put, uh, put, put some buzzing uh, devices next to your store so people can mm, blindly find their way to your products? That could be a thing. So uh, it's not only about markets. You can, you, you can help others. And this project is my personal favorite. It doesn't have too much follow, uh, uh, followers uh, so far, but I hope it will change at some point because uh, the ideas uh, of the team from Pro uh, Project Habitat, I think, or Project Habitat, uh, is to uh, help the reproduction and survival of a rare speci species of moss uh, that is losing its habitat because of the human activity. So they suggest to put this moss on your, on your gloves and walk around and help this moss to reproduce. How wonderful is that? I think it looks beautiful. I would totally wear that, uh, would you? Mm, but let's not forget, this, this is the last project. And this is the last thing that I want to point out uh, in uh, the realm of speculative design, is that don't, don't forget about fun. Help yourself. Help yourself to some ice cream. This uh, project, uh, the cloud project, uh, 12 years old now, I think, uh, and it's, it started from the um, ideas of, it, uh, of the cloud seeding technology, how this can be used uh, in uh, our day-to-day uh, -day life. And these people m made a genius invention, a truck that spreads ice cream. And they actually put it at some... Uh, parties uh, or some, some uh, events and people were super happy. I hope uh, for the next summer in Darmstadt uh, we can use this kind of trucks somewhere, uh, somewhere over here. I would be the first customer over there to stand under the clouds of ice cream. So here it is. Uh, I hope I uh, inspired your imagination and gave you some ideas of how we can 
uh, think about the world freely, how we can relieve ourselves from the constraints of today's reality and go into the future. Exactly, that's the, you, you're doing just right. Please take a picture of this, uh, of this books because uh, these are uh, my uh, person. Th this is my personal. Uh, path uh, to this understanding, uh, some things on design of the future, including the speculative, des uh, speculative everything uh, that I mentioned before by uh, Dan and uh, Rubin, uh, and some things for the outlook uh, that generally give you ideas of the social dynamics. And here is another page for the bookworms. So if you're very much into uh, reading and understa understanding how this world works, I suggest these things. They, 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 they mean they about that. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.